So in our Landscape Pro asset pack, we also received a bunch of different foliage, trees, brushes, rocks, plants, and etc. So if you are to take a look into the STF folder and toggle the filter for static mesh, you'll be able to see all the different trees, rocks, and various other things that come with that asset pack. So for example, if I was to now drag and drop one of these static mesh assets into my world, it would appear in my world. That makes sense, right? You put it there and there it is. Give it a moment. If it appears white on your screen, the shaders may take a moment to compile. But basically, you can place and drag and scale and move and rotate and do whatever you want with static meshes and just place them individually into your world should you so choose, if that makes you happy. That, however, would probably be considered the slow way to do things, the very precise way to do things, but probably also the slow way to do things. Let's take a look at a faster way. So we have so far taken a look at our selection mode and our landscape mode. Today we're going to be taking a look at the foliage mode. So switch to foliage mode, and then with your STF folder open and with some of your static meshes available down here, Go ahead and drag one of your static meshes into the drop foliage here part under the paint section. So I'm just going to go ahead and drag a nice little pine tree right in there. Now the paint option looks a little bit like a dome and now if I left click and hold and paint around, the little pine tree will be painted all over my landscape. Now you can affect certain things such as the brush size. Wow, that's probably a little too big. The brush size and also the paint density. That is how many trees appear as you're painting. So let's see, let's change that down a bit. And let me zoom out just a bit here. And now I can paint with a lesser density. So it sort of randomly puts in the assets that you want to choose. Now, if you wanted to put in multiple assets, so for example, say I wanted to put in some rocks and say I wanted to put in some clovers and maybe some other types of trees, I could put in multiple static meshes into my paintbrush and then when I paint it sort of randomly selects from those different things and uh, puts, puts them where I want them to go. As you're happily painting away, you may find yourself making mistakes from time to time. The handy dandy erase tool will solve those problems for you. Simply select it and erase. You can also affect the erase density. So zero, zero will erase everything. Uh, if you change that to something like 50, 52, 50% 50 erase, then you will erase about half of the foliage that you trace over. Don't know if you could see that very clearly, but let's go a little closer. And there you can see it sort of erased half of the forest. The radius also affects, as it says here, the minimum distance between foliage instances. So if you want to make sure that you don't get rocks that are too closely grouped together, like these ones are kind of overlapping, you can set your radius to something further apart so that they are sure not to overlap or something like that. There's 50 and that's probably not enough. Let's change that up to 55 perhaps. Oh, that's still not enough. Let's change that up to like 500 or no, 5,000. That's okay. 5,000 is, is certainly too many, but as you can see, that's added quite a bit of space in between rocks. So you can play around with the settings and find what works for you. I just want to get a good setting here. Let's try Let's try 15. There we go. That's got a bit of spacing now in between it. So you just kind of play around and you tweak and you test. Also scaling. You can affect the scale at which objects are spawned in at. So for example, let's say I took this tree. I could say that the uh, minimum scale X, uh, and this is of course uniform scale scaling, you can choose to scale the width, the height, and the uh, length individually, or you can choose to scale in a uniform way. Everything scales the same up, down, left, right, and high. So for example, if I wanted the minimum height to be like 0.1, and the maximum height to be four, then when these are spawned in, they will spawn in with those differing height uh, possibilities. So let's, oh, that's probably 
too dense. You know what I'm going to do in order so we can see what we we're actually doing here. I'm going to untick that one and I'm going to untick that one. That way they're no longer going to be spawned in. I'm actually going to change the density to like three here so that we can see what we're doing. Let's go to another empty landscape. So anyway, I'm going to get a little bit closer so that you can see that indeed the trees are spawning in at different heights from little tiny trees like that to much bigger trees. And you can affect that in whichever way makes you happy. Let's go, uh, I don't know, let's go something crazy. Let's go a maximum height of 15 and we should get some pretty big trees in there. There we go. <laughs> anyway, lots of good fun. So this is what I would certainly call the manual way of placing train foliage. Now we're going to be looking at some procedural ways to generate foliage, which is my preferred way. But if you're the artistic type and you like to have everything just so, or say you're specifically painting out a creek or something that needs trees right beside it or whatever the case may be, you want to get, you might want to get really fine detailed. So that is how you paint meshes in a fine detailed way. You can also use the select tool to specifically select individual meshes that have been placed. You can also move them around, you can scale them, you can rotate them, and you can affect them individually after they've been sort of generally uh, painted into place. The lasso tool allows you to select multiple foliages and then move them around also accordingly uh, to, your, to your needs, to different points in the map. There is the single tool which will place a single instant of the selected foliage. So you would select the foliage that you want. In this case, let's say the rock and we place a single ver single instance of it. Actually, in this case, we have multiple selected. So I'm just going to select one and place that one just wherever I want it to go. Or maybe place that one wherever I want it to go. Or you can select multiple ones and place them both. Oops. Multiple ones and place them both. There we go. Something like that. Uh, the remove tool, you would select the foliage that you want and click on remove to remove it, or you can lasso multiple foliages like so, and then click on remove to remove those. And that is basically the foliage mode in a nutshell. You should be able to now create foliage to your heart's content. This lesson is from my Unreal Engine Beginners course. You can get access to the entire course on my Patreon page. All of my Patreons get full access to all of my courses. And I will be adding more courses and tutorials over time. Links in the description. Thank you for all the support.